Okay, um, this is now part five in our video series concerning the Taylor series and the uh, binomial expansion. And in the previous video, in part four, we were dealing with this situation where we had a plus x raised to a negative exponent and we wanted to ask ourselves well, if we try to expand this in a Taylor series with this formula what kind of an expression do we get and we notice that here then f of 0 came out to be equal a to the minus n the first derivative evaluated at 0 was minus n times a to the minus n minus 1. The second derivative of this function evaluated when x is 0 is equal to n positive n times n plus 1 times a to the minus n minus 2. And then the third derivative of this function evaluated when x is 0 now we have the minus sign, and it's n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 times a to the minus n minus 3. The fourth derivative evaluated when x is 0. Now it's positive. When this is an even number, it's positive out here. When it's negative, when it's an odd number, we have a negative number here. And it's adding n, n plus 1, n plus 2 n plus 3 times a to the minus n minus 4. Then what we did was we said well this is raised to the minus n power what kind of an expression do we get when we take the nth derivative of this and in the last video we determined that it is this expression right here. Of course this would just be a plus x to the minus 2n power now here we want to pause for a moment um, because this is different when we were dealing with the video series in part uh, 2 and 3 and we had this expression where n was a positive uh, exponent when we took the nth derivative it was just simply n factorial so if you try to take derivatives after that this is just a constant and all those derivatives would be 0 then. So that's why when we have a plus x and this is a positive exponent we get a finite expression for it. This, where k goes from 0 to n. We do not get an infinite series expression when n is positive even though our Taylor series keeps going out forever but when we have a plus x and that and n is a positive number once we take the nth derivative we just simply get n factorial and if we take derivatives after that they're all going to be zero but here now when we're dealing in a situation with a negative exponent as we have here Now, the nth derivative is this times a plus x to the minus 2n, so we can keep on taking derivatives afterwards, which means that when we try to get an expression for this using the Taylor series, we're going to have an infinite series. It's not going to be a finite series as it was when we had a positive exponent here. Okay, now if this is our nth derivative then when x is 0 this is going to be minus 1 to the n and again depending upon whether this is an even number or an odd number this would be plus or minus here and we have n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 and so forth and the last term is 2n minus 1 when x is 0, that's just a to the minus 2n power. 
So let's do this now. Let's go and plug these values into this formula and see what kind of expression we get for a plus x to the minus n. Okay, here we have f of 0. That's just a to the minus n. Now we have f prime of 0 times x. That's minus n a to the minus n minus 1. We have minus n times a. And we can factor out the negative 1 and say minus n plus 1. And that is times x. OK, the next term then is this one, which is this. So now we have plus n times n plus 1 times a to the minus n plus 2. And that's times x squared. And we can continue along. Let's add a, just a few more terms here. Um, oh, and now we're going to have it from this one. So now we have a negative sign. And that will be this term here, minus n, n plus 1, n plus 2. This will be a to the minus n plus 3 power. So we'll put that in. And we forgot something. Back on this term here, that should be divided by 2 factorial. So let's make some room here. OK, now from this expression, we have minus n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 divided by 3 factorial times a to the minus n plus 3 from here. Like this, times x cubed. OK, and we can keep going along here in the same pattern. Um, finally, we could get to the nth derivative, and that is minus 1 to the n. I didn't say the nth derivative, but the nth derivative evaluated when x is 0. And that is equal to minus 1 to the n times n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And it keeps going out to 2n minus 1, and this is a to the minus 2n power times x to the n divided by n factorial. And there are infinite number of terms that come after that. So this now then would be a plus x to the minus n we write it out with a Taylor expansion series. Now, if we remember what happened when n was positive, the expression was with these binomial coefficients. But remember, for example, the binomial coefficient of n over 2, that was n times n minus 1 over 2 factorial. The binomial coefficient n over 3, that was n, n minus 1, n minus 2, divided by 3 factorial. Well, here we have, besides alternating plus and minus signs, we have n times n plus 1, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. 
Could it be now that these terms that we are seeing, could they simply be this? Could all of these terms that we get simply be this type of uh, binomial coefficient? So let's look at this and see what happens. And we're going to need a little bit more room. So let's erase this. And let's, for the moment, let's look at this type of binomial coefficient. Here we have, instead of having n over k, we'll have minus n over, say, i, instead of n over i. or in our previous videos, we were quite often writing it like, if we had a binomial coefficient like this, we would write it like this. It means the same thing. Or of course, n over i. We were writing it previously like this. Either way is correct. But OK, let's use our definition then of binomial coefficients. What does that equal? Well, in, in the numerator, we're going to have minus n factorial divided by i factorial and minus n minus i factorial. So minus n minus i factorial times i factorial. Now, let's see what this means. Here, in the numerator, I'm going to want some room here. Put the equal sign over here. Try and keep things in focus. Here, we're going to have minus n. Then we'll have minus n, minus 1, minus n, minus 2. And we can keep going here now till we have in the numerator minus n minus i. Okay, the next term higher than that would be minus n minus i plus 1. Let's see, we'd write it like this. Then the next term would be minus n minus i. The next term would be minus n minus i minus 1, and keep getting smaller and smaller. So for here, we can just say times that factorial. Down here in the numerator, or the denominator, we have minus n minus i factorial times i factorial. So this term and this term cancel. And here then what we have is minus n, minus n minus 1, minus n minus 2, all the way down to a term of, mi of minus n minus, not i, it's the next term higher than that, so it's minus i plus 1. Now that would mean that going from here to here we would have i minus 1 number of terms, or including this one, up here we have i number of terms in the numerator. OK, and in each one of these, we can factor out a negative 1. This would be plus n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus i minus 1. So let's write it like that. This would equal, and if we factor out 
a negative 1 from each one of these, and we have i number of terms, then we're going to have minus 1 to the i times n times n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 going all the way out to this term which would be n plus i minus 1. divided by i factorial. So this expression right here is that binomial coefficient. That binomial coefficient gives us this expression right here. Now, let's see. What happens, say, when i is equal to 2. Okay, when i equals 2, then this i number of terms in the numerator, so if i equals 2, there has to be two terms in the numerator, n times n plus 1. That's a positive number, and there we have 2 factorial uh, in the denominator. Well, okay, ignore this for the moment. We're saying now, i equals 2, and we're going to have n times n plus 1. And that's what we had right here. When we put it into the expression for the Taylor series, we had it divided by 2 factorial. And indeed, that's the expression that we get from here when i is equal to 2. What happens if we have minus n over 3? Now, i equals 3. In the numerator, there has to be three terms then. Here they are, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. This would be a minus sign now. So you have minus 1 to the third. And notice that when we take the third derivative at 0, we have minus n times n plus 1 times n plus 2. And now we're going to, have to divide it by three factorial from this expression, but that's exactly what we had when we put it into the uh, Taylor expansion series. We had this divided by three factorial. So all those terms that we had can be written like this. So finally, we can get an expression now when we have a plus x to the minus n, that is equal to the sum, and before we're working with k, so we'll go back to k here, from k equal to 0 of minus n over k, and then we have a and we have x to the k here, and remember what this was, this was minus n plus k. This goes to infinity. So here is where, again, when we have a negative exponent, here's where it differs from uh, the binomial expansion series. When we had a positive exponent, there it was just a finite expression. Here, we keep taking terms all the way out to infinity. But at last, finally, though, we do have an expression um, when we have the exponent is equal to a negative number. Now, it turns out that this expression, we can modify it a little bit, and it comes out to be in a much more, in a, in a form that's much more easier to use when we're dealing with generating functions. So finally, in the next video, we'll wrap all this up, and we're going to put this in a slightly different form, and we're taking the trouble to do that, because in the future videos, when we start dealing with generating functions, it'll make life a lot easier for us. So come back, join us for that video, and we'll try and get all this stuff finished off.